Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking through like a couple of tips that I made. I originally actually had like a list of maybe like 28 or 30 tips, but then I was like, maybe I should split it out a bit. If I threw like 30 tips into one video, it's going to be like really hard to digest. So I figured maybe I'll just split it into two videos. And so when you finish this one and you kind of like what you saw, keep an eye out for the other one. Otherwise, let's get right into the video and let's start with the first tip. And that is if you're hard stuck on a stage, then I will show you my secret weapon. So <laughs> obviously, the secret weapon doesn't work for me. I actually used this to cheese 714. So 714 was decently hard, except I did this. So if you've noticed on slot five, there is actually like a hand symbol here. And so if I click into this one, it means I can actually borrow a support unit. So you see here, select support. If I click into here, you can see all of the busted units that all of my friends have. I'm talking the A2 Carleens, the A2 Hydrads, the A2 Sharonas. For me, I borrowed an A3 Sharona to cheese 714. So guys, if any of you are stuck on a stage like 714, then like consider borrowing an A3 Sharona. That's essentially the tip. Go borrow someone's unit and then go wreak havoc with it. However, guys, just remember that you can only do this on slot five. So you notice that the slots don't actually have like that symbol. Okay, guys, tip number two. So if you actually hold down your mouse or like hold down on the touch screen on a monster, you can see their attack range as well as their next attack. This is actually especially helpful for bosses because you can see like what they do in the next attack. For example, for like the Umbra Hulk guy, you can see if he's gonna like pick up all his boulders and then throw them at you next turn. On top of that, for like some stages like 814, you realize that you can actually dodge every single attack so you don't need a healer. And guys, I know that they explained this to you like in the tutorial, but apparently like most people don't know about this, which is absolutely ridiculous. And so yeah, this should like help you at least like dodge a little bit better. All right, guys, since we're already here, I want to talk about tip three, which is when you quit out of a stage for the first time ever, it does not actually consume any of your prism or stamina. And so Arknight vets will be very, very familiar with this mechanic. A lot of the time, yeah, you could just like pass the stage or whatever, right? But but like for me personally, there were a couple of times where like on my first clear, I could only get like two stars. And then so at the end, I was like, well, I actually know how this plays through. And so I quit the game and then I went back in, finished it, and then I got three stars. So as I pushed further and further and with my like A1 level 40 team, there were a lot of times where I was taking way too much damage and I couldn't get the HP more than 50%. And so again, I quit and then I made sure I played better the next time. And now moving on to the next tip, tip number four. And since we're again already here, tip number four is actually about the square that you are standing on right now. There are two interesting things about this. So the first thing is that it's actually blank and so it doesn't actually count towards an element. But the second thing that's more interesting is that if you double tap, it actually lets you attack in place. If you don't have any enemies next to you, it will just kind of like skip your turn. So let me double click this one and show you guys real quick. So if I double click like that, you see that I stayed in place and I didn't move anywhere. Now, why exactly is this useful? Because there are some times where you do want to like stall a turn. Maybe you're waiting out an ability or something like that. And if you do consume any of the squares, it might mess up your plan. So like there are definitely like some cases where you want to use this. The majority of the time you're going to want to be like, you know, moving around and making sure like you're getting like tempo or like doing as much damage as you can per turn. But yeah, that's a good to know just in case you need to like stall or something. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of this and then we'll go on to tip number five. So tip number five, and that's you can actually max breakthrough vice. So just a quick explanation on breakthrough. So you essentially use a bunch of dupes or like the dupe currency to upgrade a character. However, for Vice, our main heroine in the story, we actually get a bunch of her shards as we're going through like the story stages. Even her BT2 is like already really good. She gets preemptive, which means that she actually gets to activate her active skill at the start of the battle. However, what you're going to notice is that you're actually going to need one, two, three, four, four of these soul ambers here. And considering I'm already up to 814 and I only have three, there is actually one that is not obtained through the story. And that is actually over back over here. And I will show you guys real quick, just over in the notifications because I can't access it right now. But essentially it is in that login banner. So if you guys have been paying attention, you can see over here, there is like a 10 day, I think seven or 10 days or something. This kind of event where we just have to log in and you get like 15 star flares and all of that. And you also get the one vice soul amber. So this is actually where you get Vice's last Soul Amber. If I go back, I want to show you guys Vice's last like ability from her breakthrough five, I think. And so if you guys do manage to pick it up, we get an increased base attack count by one and increases additional count range to 12 tiles. So if you guys do remember this skill, it does like your pew, 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 pew. So the base attack count is originally five. And so it becomes six. And then the count range is actually eight because it's the eight around her. And then it, this one becomes 12. And so, yeah, that's pretty strong for a low amount of investment. Honestly, 
honestly, I think Vice is just a very, very solid blue sniper. I don't think that you can go wrong investing in her unless like you have a really stacked blue team. And with that being said, let's move on to the next tip. Tip number six. Tip number six is actually more of like a quality of life thing. So I wanted to show you guys this one over here, map style in which I am using color assist. So let me hit edit and you can see that we have a bunch of options. Me personally, I prefer the color assist because it's just like way easier on the eyes. So if there are some of you that are colorblind or some of you that are like finding it a little bit hard to look at, then do consider the color assist option because it might help out a bit. I know it's definitely helped out for me. However, it's probably more important for like people who are doing recordings or like content creators, streamers, broadcasters, stuff like that. If you guys are watching, I do suggest that you turn this on because like just for accessibility sake, right? For your potential viewers. Tip number seven, and it's to push Colossus. There's not much else to say about it. It's just push the freaking Colossus. If you guys have not realized, I made a guide to like the Colossus and essentially it's just telling you to push this ah. thing. It has actually been a while since I've done that guide, but as you can see, I have reached bridge level four and I have pushed prison pillar, resource and dispatch up to level four. Honestly, guys, like you cannot go wrong with pushing this guy. I personally think it's actually more important than pushing up to A14. I'm going to stop hopping on about this, but push Colossus. All right, guys, tip eight. And it's that when you're pushing Colossus, like you need to farm that like Colossus upgrade material. It's just this guy right here. And so what you may realize here, or you may not, is that in this stage, you are protecting the engine and the engine is like taking all of the aggro from all of the monsters. What this means is that you actually do not need to take a healer and you can take like another DPS just to make it all work a bit better. So yeah, that's a pretty simple tip. Like, but honestly, you guys shouldn't be having much trouble with these guys here. Personally, I'm only like A130 or A140 and like these have been like very, very easy. I've honestly never struggled with it, but like, you know, it may vary for you. Tip number eight, and most people know this one, but like push the spire as fast as you can because this spire actually gives you so many ascension mats. So I guess this one goes out to you more newer players. Personally, you can see that I've actually gone up in the molten one and the thunderbolt spire as well. And I actually did not, I think, farm a single piece of ascension equipment for these two teams. So if I click into challenge here, I'll show you guys my lightning team. And okay, yeah, I'm kind of cheesing it a little bit. I've got two level ones, a level 30 and kind of like that. But like essentially what I'm trying to say is that everything that went into Michael and Gronru, I did not like farm anything for it. And that's kind of the same case for my fire team in which there's actually a little bit more upgrades. So if I get into my fire team, you can see over here, you can see that everyone is A1 and I did not farm like a single piece of ascension material for this. With that being said though, like depending on your team, you might actually need to go farm ascension materials because like for my team, like my water team, for some reason, my team, they like all use the same stuff. So if I click into vice and then I show you guys uh, this one over here and then I click into ascension, you guys will see that I need water potion twos as well as these water slit things. And then if I go to the next one, you'll see that I need the same thing for Phyllishai. There's actually quite a lot of overlap of mats. So you see this one, this is the slit again. And so I kind of get it if you guys do need to actually farm it because there are a lot of people, especially on Discord or on Reddit, that are like, oh, you guys don't need to farm mats. Like, why are you guys farming mats? Just get it from the Spire. But like, honestly, if everyone needs the same stuff, I just can't get it all from the Spire, you know? And so I'm just here to tell you that it's okay to farm for mats because sometimes these kinds of circumstances like this actually exist. Okay, guys, let's move on to the next one. And that's tip number 10, I think. So tip number 10, and it's essentially about this one over here, White Knight, Black Underbelly, AKA the Nightium farm. And so if I hop into it, if you guys do remember, this is essentially like you killing the golden chariot guy. If I open this guy up, it is this boss with the chariot. And so some of you have not like actually needed to farm for Nightium yet. And so, you know, that's, you're quite fortunate. However, I have farmed the heck out of this guy and there is a bonus stage in this. And so what my tip is, is like, try not to auto this stage because then you'll end up like autoing into the bonus stage. Obviously the bonus stage doesn't always proc, but like, you know, it's better to be safe. Also, in addition to that, you want to save all of your skills for the bonus stage. The boss itself is actually like really, really easy. And so like, if you guys can go into the bonus stage with all of your skills up and go like slap around those like monsters, get a lot of bonus night him, and then it's all profit from there. And like, it's, it's an only good thing, right? It's a good thing. So yeah, this is really like two parts of a tip. First is like, try to do it manually. So like you actually get the bonus stage and not auto it. And then second of all, try to save all of your skills so that you can go like blow up those bonus stage mobs. All right, with that in mind, let's get on to tip number 11. And that is going to be about the recruitment. So this is actually something that I didn't see before because I think they only recently added it. And so if I click into the view details of the limited banner, you will see that we are actually getting a guaranteed five star on our first 10 recruitments on every time limited banner. And so again, if you guys are Arknights players, like you guys will rejoice. This is essentially an identical mechanic to over there. Why do I know that it's every banner? Because it says after the time limited recruitment, 
achievement update, which is when the banner switches, we are going to get that guaranteed five star within the first 10. And so with that in mind, it is going to be exactly the same. You Arknight vets already know what to do. What we actually should be doing is like saving our loom amber and then like pulling singles on every single limited banner. And obviously like if they are your waifu like Uriel was for me, then you freaking go all in. But if you kind of want like the most value over time, then this is what you're going to be doing. So again, to summarize, to maximize the amount of five stars you get, you want to be pulling singles up until you get your first five star, which should theoretically be in your first 10 recruitments on each limited banner. That one's easy and that's so good because like this wasn't actually here before. This was 100% not here before. All right, guys, tip number 12. And if I hop into the Explorer, it's actually about 814. So you can see that I've actually not done it here. And the reason is because 814 is actually exceptionally hard. So what is the actual tip? And the tip itself is that just like, it's okay. It's okay to actually stop at 813 and not be able to finish 814. I've tried it a couple of times. I tried to cheese it. It's actually really hard. It's mainly a DPS check, if anything. You can actually take absolutely no damage from this, but like in the experience that I've actually gone through, like I've gotten timed out every single time. So yeah, like don't worry too much if you can't beat this guy yet. Obviously, this guy is holding onto a central plugin, which is like holding back our base from going to level five. But I think if you're at this point and you can't clear the boss, it's okay. Like four is kind of a nice place to stop. And so from here, you should just be building up your teams and hopefully one day you'll be able to slap him around and get your base to level five. What some other people do about A14 is that you'll notice that the boss is entirely blue. And so what that means is that they've actually built thunder comps and like gone and slammed them at this boss actually. I think it's a decent idea. I don't think it's the worst idea. And like, you know, if it's gonna work for you, then do it. To be honest, if I can't clear it in like the next few days, that's probably what I'm gonna do as well. All right, guys, and let's go to the last tip, which is gonna be tip number 13, uh, five, no, 10, three. And so it's actually gonna be about this guy down here, the old seal. So if you guys don't know what the old seal is, after you've finished 714 and you've watched the story of 81, you get access to the old seal. So I'm just gonna click into the old seal and it's essentially a recruitment system of like some really, really busted characters. And so here you can see Regal. And if I click into this, you'll be able to see all of the different characters over here. So we've got Frostfire over here and here and there. There are a lot of other videos that are actually showcasing these guys already. So I'm not gonna like go through each of their skills and stuff. To be honest, if you've already hit 714, you can like definitely have a look at them yourself. And so what I kind of want to talk about is kind of like a priority, not 100% like a tier list. Because if we're going from a tier list point of view, I'd argue probably like Water and Thunder are like probably the better ones. But really, they are all really, really freaking good because like they come to you at A3. And what I mean by A3 is Ascension 3. So if I go back to Regal, you'll see over here at Ascension 3 when obtained. However, you will notice that there are a bunch of quests that you need to do before you can unlock this guy. And then after these ones, you will actually have to go through another four pages and it only gets longer and longer. And I suspect it's going to take between like maybe like two to three months to actually finish each one of these tabs. And so just on the screen, I'm going to put a preview of the other quests and yeah, it gets really, really freaking dank. And so there are a couple of things that I do want to mention on this topic. The first is answering the question, well, which one should I choose? There are kind of like two approaches that you can take for this one. The first is to take the character for your weakest team. And the second is to take the character for your strongest team. And so these are like very, very different perspectives. And I'll explain the rationale between each one. The reason why you would take it for your strongest team is because like one of the requirements that are actually pretty massive, which is to clear Spire 30. And to clear Spire 30, you're probably going to be needing like your strongest team. In the early, early game, this was kind of like the recommended approach. You take the one that you are probably going to be able to grind for. The one that you can probably clear the Frost Spire level 34. However, opinions have kind of changed and even mine's kind of changed as well. And where it's changed is that you can see that we are time gated here by like 10 days. And so what exactly does this mean? It means that if you can actually bring up your team, so for example here, if you can bring up your water team and be able to like clear the Frost Spire level 30 in 10 days, I think you can actually just pick whoever you want. Obviously, you still need to be able to like have the units and be able to beat Frost Spire or whatever Spire level 30. But honestly, that's the position that I'm leaning on. So if you think you have the confidence to like build up a team and be able to finish the Spire level 30 in like 10 days, then honestly, like pick whoever the heck you want. For me personally, I want to make my water team stronger because somehow my fire and my thunder team got stronger than them. But yeah, that's kind of the rationale, the kind of thinking that your head should be around when you pick one of these guys. And that rationale to summarize is that you can pick anyone as long as you believe that you can build up that team in 10 days and clear the Spire with them. Honestly, as you guys saw for me personally, I am like five, six days in, I think, and I am actually up to Spire 23. I do believe that in like seven or eight days to fulfill this like time gate, I will be able to build my team strong enough to finish the Frost Spire level 30. And so yeah, I'm gonna keep going with this guy. Another tip about this one is that I think, I think that if you finish like one of these quests, so you can see that they're 
all like still in progress, right? If you finish one of these quests, you can actually switch Aurorians and actually go to the next one over here. So if I went over here and I hit like select, I'm not gonna hit it right now because it's gonna clear all of my progress. But like if you just select someone else when you've actually finished those quests, I believe those quests will be saved, but like don't quote me on it because I haven't done it yet. This one does need a little bit of testing. So like don't hold me to it yet, but do keep it in mind and just watch out for some updates. All right, guys, I think that was tip number 13 and I probably got like another 12, 13 in a second video coming up. But otherwise for this video right now, I don't think there's actually any more to share with you. And so with that being said, let's start wrapping up the video. And so I've got a secret question. Which of the 13 tips did you find the most helpful or like did you like not actually not know about? I'm actually pretty interested because a lot of you are going to know like a lot of the tips that I've talked about in this video. So the ones I'm interested in are actually the ones that like you guys have not, like not even heard about. But yeah, drop that into the comments below and I would really appreciate it. Because on top of that, it means that you've made it to the end of the video and I am very, very grateful. But otherwise, let's move on with the ending sequence. If you guys have found this video helpful or you kind of like it, then consider a like, a comment, a sub, a follow, a pin, a sub. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.